The morning mist mantles the coastline farmland. As it begins to burn off, I start laying the first long net of the day. My plan is to surround the whole hedgerow, only stopping now and then to lay a purse net over those tasty looking holes. Once the ferrets are collared up, I check and double check they are working before Bella leads me to where we are about to start ferreting. This is where light coloured ferrets are essential with so much green foliage about. Once entered into the warren, these pig-filled ferrets waste no time in stamping their authority onto the locals. I deal with one rabbit in the stop net, but a cheeky relative barges past my ferret, only to back net itself. Bella has finally matured into a half-decent rabbit and dog. Signalling where I should place the ferret, her mark has been rewarded by another bull and bunny. This is another plus of having a good ferreting dog. They can get to the net a lot quicker than what we can. But the stop nets are magic. As I approach, Bella releases her bounty and goes off in search for more. A rabbit bolts for what it perceives as freedom, but the athletic Bella is onto it in a flash and makes a catch before the rabbit has time, contemplating going back down the hole or into one of my waiting nets. Once retrieved, we move on. Steve has now turned up and he's about to cook us dinner. You may have seen Steve before cooking for us, whether it be a bacon or sausage sandwich, but today he's going to show us how to smoke our harvested rabbits. As I am preparing the rabbits, a sharp knife is essential. Skinned and ready to cook, Steve is about to explain how we're about to smoke our rabbits. Right, well, Simon's caught the rabbits now. He's skinned them out, forks them for me. Happy days. And I'm just going to take the fillets off them and just uh, break them down ready for smoking. So first of all, I'm going to take the front legs off. Lift the leg up a little bit. Peel them back. I'm going to cut down here, turn it over, cut through to the bone there, hold it back. Find the backbone, put the knife in. Following down the backbone, probably should have put my glasses on for this, but never mind. And then cut it across here at the hip bone there. Just make sure it's just detached there. Get my finger and thumb in there, and then pull the saddle out. There we go, a lovely saddle there. Knife in, flat, not too much pressure. Bring the knife down. Knife across here, there we go. And just gently ease that saddle out. 
two lovely pieces of meat there. Right, what we have to remember here is you can see there's a, some sinew on here. If I just cook that now, it'll just curl up and go very tight and it wouldn't be very good to eat. So I just want to show you how to take that sinew off. Put the knife in at a slight angle. Not too much pressure again, you don't need a lot of pressure, it's very soft meat. And then just move the knife backwards and forwards. So now we're ready for smoking, so I'll just show you the kit. I'm just using one of these little gas burners. And I'm using... This is, this is what you'd use to, uh, for a wok that goes on top of an uh, a ordinary cooker. Just brings it up a little bit so that you, it's, it'll balance up nicely. And then I'm using a, an oriental wok. You know, it's a cheap sort of a wok that I bought from an Asian cookery shop. Great for the job. So, a quick look inside this, what I'm going to do. So inside here I've just got a bit of tray that I've cut to fit inside there. And most importantly, I've actually, I'm going to line this with uh, silver foil because when we put the rice and tea and sugar in, I don't want it to burn to the bottom of the, of the, the wok itself. I just want to be able to just pull this out and throw it away. So that's the, the basic kit. And what we've spoken with today is, uh, what have we got in here? We've got half a mug of rice, three dessert spoons of brown sugar, and one dessert spoon of loose tea. That's a smoky tea. I'm using Lapsong Souchong, but you know, you can use other tea. I've even used loose tea that was just in the cupboard. It will give you a, a smoky flavor. Um, and it's a delicate flavor. You don't want to over smoke it. So here's my rice, sugar, and tea mix. Just gonna put this in the bottom here. Spread that evenly over the bottom. My grill. Put that in there. Right, so I've got my lovely fillets here that I've really I prepared earlier. Let's put them on there. Now, if I'd been smoking these at home, I would have brined them just for 10 minutes, just with some and some salt water. But we're out in the field, so I can't do that. But what I'm going to do is just give them a, a quick salt over. Hold that in, try and keep as much smoke in there as possible. Well, this is at 10 minutes, so I haven't had a look at it because I don't want to lose any of the smoke. So this is the moment of truth, so 10 minutes. Might have to do a little bit more. Don't know, I'll have a look. Oh no, that's beautifully done. I can see that's well done. Ready to eat. I'm just going to slice this through, it's beautifully cooked there, you can see it's cooked right the way through. As we both took into our smoked rabbit sandwiches, it definitely gets the whitehead seal of approval.